WordPress website setup using Bluehost. Let's get to it. What's up everybody, my name is David. I hope you're having a great day. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to create a WordPress website using Bluehost. Whether or not you're already a Bluehost customer or you're thinking of using Bluehost for your next website, I got you covered. I'm gonna share with you everything that you need to know to get started including how to get a domain name, get a shared hosting account, how to set up your website, install WordPress, as well as a bunch of professional backend settings that you need to know. So if you're ready to get started, let's jump into my laptop and begin. Welcome to Bluehost.com. So Bluehost is a very popular web host for WordPress, and they're actually just one of two web hosts recommended by WordPress. As you can see right here, recommended by WordPress.org. So if we take a look at WordPress.org, we can see that Bluehost and Dreamhost are the two recommended options now to get started with bluehost is very simple you can just click on this big yellow button to get started you can navigate to different services up top here so wordpress you'll see wordpress hosting and that's a managed experience it's really good for like established websites not people who are just starting out and woocommerce is just a plugin for wordpress and you can install woocommerce on a shared hosting plan anyways we want the shared hosting plan but let's go ahead and click on this big yellow button over there and where it takes us let me close out of that so where it takes us is the shared hosting plans so we have basic choice plus online store and pro so online store will have be able to install woocommerce they'll give you more functionality geared for an online store but you can still install woocommerce on a choice plus plan as well it's just that this has more storage and more resources dedicated to your account so it's more ideal for something like an online store that's a little bit more complicated with regards to a database. You also have basic over here, but basic, the issue with this is that you get one website and once you understand how to make a website with Bluehost and WordPress, you are probably gonna wanna be able to create multiple websites. So I do recommend the choice plus plan over here. Anyways, when you're ready, click on select. So you'll have an upsell right here for the online store. We can just go ahead and click skip. And next, you need to set a primary domain name on the account. So you can either register a new domain name through Bluehost, or you can do this later. It's totally up to you. So if you register a domain name through Bluehost, you get it free for the first year. Then after the first year, you do need to pay a renewal fee. So I have my domain name typed in. I'm going to click on next. Great. So this domain name is available, and it has been added to my cart. Now over here, you have your account information, your first name, last name. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence and walk you through how to pay for something online. Just enter in your personal information as required as well as payment information. One thing I do want you to pay attention to is the service term plan right there. You have 12 months for a low rate or 36 months. I do like the 36 month rates because that's a long period of time to lock in a great hosting plan for a very low price. So I definitely recommend 12 or 36, but 36 is pretty tempting because that is a great price point, $7, 745 for 36 months. That's really nice. And of course your domain name registration is free for the first year. Now over here, you can uncheck site lock essentials and you can also uncheck the professional email as well. Anyways, I set it back to 12 months and this is the final price point with a free domain name. And then all you have to do is enter your payment information and then click on submit. Welcome to your Bluehost dashboard. So once you submit payment, you will have to follow a few steps to secure your account, like setting a pin and whatnot. Just follow the on-screen instructions. Once you get through everything, this is what your dashboard looks like. So off on the left here, we have a home link, then we have a websites link. So this is where we can navigate to all the websites on our accounts. cPanel email, this is where you can set a professional email for your accounts, like hello at your website. The domain names you register through Bluehost are under the tab for domains. Hosting shows what your hosting plan is. Also make sure to check your email because you will be receiving emails from Bluehost, particularly the welcome email, which is your payment confirmation. And all these emails provide helpful details regarding your account. All right, everyone. So for domain names, to be honest, I really don't recommend using Bluehost for your domain name register simply because their renewal rate is quite high and they also charge for who is protection. Now, the benefit of buying your domain name through Bluehost is that everything is just set up automatically at the click of a button. But I definitely recommend using something like Namecheap, which is a proper domain name register to get your domain names 
because the prices are lower, the renewal rates are lower, and they also provide Whois protection completely for free, where again, Bluehost charges for Whois protection. So even though your domain name is free for the first year, it ends up being quite expensive long-term if you're going to be using Bluehost as your domain name register, which I just don't recommend. Now again, it's totally up to you. It's your website. You can do whatever you want, but I want to give you various options. So let me jump into my laptop again, and I'll go to Namecheap and get a domain name, and I'll show you how to set up a website with Bluehost and Namecheap if you want to go that route. So let's get started. Welcome to Namecheap.com. So this is my preferred domain name register of choice. This is what I use for all my domain names. And I like Namecheap because they have free Whois protection, good introduction rates, and a low renewal price. And they also offer routine discounts like this right here that you can take advantage of if you're a new customer. Anyways, when you're ready to get started, just type in the domain name that you want to register right here. Then you click on search. Okay, so I have my domain name right here. Let me go ahead and click on search. And my domain name is available and I can easily add it to my cart. Now, if it's not available, you have to click up top here and try a different letter number combination. I definitely suggest just using words and I definitely suggest getting a .com if this is your first website. Anyways, when you find a combination that is available, go ahead and click on add it to cart. Next, you can ignore all these upsells right here and go ahead and click on checkout. On this page, you have your domain name registration. You can register a domain name with Namecheap up to 10 years in advance and lock in that low rate. So I definitely recommend registering for a few years in advance. If you're absolutely sure that this is the domain name that you want, you get domain name privacy completely for free. So leave this enabled. Domain name privacy is important because you do have to provide accurate information. It's part of ICANN rules for registering a domain name. So you, have to, you do have to provide your name, email address, phone number, things like that. And domain name privacy just keeps all that information private, which is what you want. So anyways, when you're ready, go ahead and click on confirm order. And there you go. So now you'll have to log into your Namecheap account. If you're a brand new Namecheap customer, you'll have to create an account. And it's as simple as that. So once you create your account, all you have to do is submit payment via PayPal or a credit card of your choosing. And once you have your domain name registered at Namecheap and you're going through the process of purchasing a hosting account with Bluehost, you can use a domain name that you own. So I have the domain name that I have registered at Namecheap. So let me go ahead and click on next. And there we go. So the domain name is associated with your hosting plan and it's as simple as that. All right, everyone, so we have our hosting account set up. Now it's time to launch our website using WordPress. Now, Bluehost has a specific and unique onboarding process that builds a custom design for your website based on your needs. And we're gonna walk you through the onboarding process right now. Creating a WordPress website with Bluehost. So let's get started. So once you submit payment, Bluehost typically directs you immediately to the onboarding process to create your website. Uh, but again, this is the process if you're starting from scratch. So I'm over here in the website tab and I'm going to add in my first website right now. And I want to install WordPress. Let's go ahead and click on continue. Let's give the site a name. So this is going to be called vlog authority. There we go. We can click on continue and now we can connect a domain name. So you can use a temporary domain name and then connect the domain name later which I really like actually, because you can just play around with an idea without having to have it a domain name, or you can just enter in a domain name that you want to use. Now, if you have a domain name registered through Bluehost, it's going to set it up automatically, or you can choose from the domain names that you have if you have multiple domain names on Bluehost. But again, I do recommend using Namecheap, so I'm gonna show you how to set up everything up with Namecheap and Bluehost. It's not too complicated, so either way is fine. Anyways, let me type in vlog, authority.com and there we go and we click on continue now the installation of wordpress will begin okay so wordpress has finished installing on vlog authority now we want to click on edit site and it will begin launching wordpress so this is the bluehost wordpress website setup feature or their onboarding process whatever you want to call it so let's go ahead and click on startup it's going to ask you a bunch of questions that you can easily answer this is just for bluehost's own internal use so they know who's using this so we'll just say used it some for example let's continue to set up 
Now, what type of website is this? I'll say that this is a tech website and let's click on continue and tell, help us tailor the site. What is your site about? So this is about vlogging. So it doesn't really make sense over here. So I'll just type this in vlogging and let's click on continue setup and introduce us to the website. So right here, this is where you enter in the metadata for your websites. Again, you can do this within your WordPress website once it's launched. So if you want to set everything up over here, you can. So I'll type this right in here, vlog, authority, page separator, vlogging, advice, and guides, whatever. So with the site title, you want to have the site title come first, page separator, and then a quick generic SEO rich description of what the website is about. And then you want a site description. The site description goes underneath that. So a blog about blogging. Let me just fix that. There we go. So again, you want to make sure that you fill up the characters as required. A blog about blogging with the best advice and guides to help you be successful. There we go. Okay. Or yeah, we'll just leave it right there. Okay. And then social media profiles. If you have this already set up, you can just add this in right there. So facebook.com, then your Facebook page, your, unfortunately it's X now. And so Twitter is not working. So if you type in x.com slash whatever, it will say, nope, not working. So you do have to put in Twitter, but Twitter will still work for this and will redirect as appropriate. And then all these other social media profile profiles, as you see fit. Anyways, you can also update your logo over here that you want. So this will update the favicon. It's not really your logo. It's your favicon. So if we take a look at my main sites, like the favicon I got going on is a DU. So that's what this is right there. So if you have this already set up, you can upload it here. Where do you get a favicon? I definitely recommend using a service like Canva dot com to create all your graphics over here so you can log in for free and create graphics as you want and a favicon is really small it's like 15 by 15 pixels something as simple as that so anyways let's click on next and then what's the top priority of your site so publishing so if you're creating a blog do you want to click on publishing selling so startup or season businesses drop shipping downloads that type of thing so this will probably install WooCommerce or some type of e-commerce plugin on your site. So you, if, again, it depends on what you're doing or designing. So again, it just, or you can just skip this step altogether because once you're in WordPress, you have access to a wide array of plugins. So I'm going to click on publishing because that's the primary goal of this website. We're creating an informational style website. Anyways, preparing your Bluehost design. And over here, it'll give you a couple different options to choose from with the design of your websites. So very simply, just click on the one that you like. <laughs> it's that simple. Uh, and I do kind of like this process. So we'll just click on this one right there. Okay. And now it gives me a high level overview of what this looks like okay and i would say yep that's fine let's click on next and there we go so this is supposed to be the header section and i have not experienced this working yet after using bluehost for the past month this section doesn't work i don't know why i don't know what's going on so let me click on next over there. So we have to skip the header menu section. It's strange. I don't know why this doesn't work over here. As required, it doesn't load and there's nothing to select over there. Very, very strange. But anyways, you have your homepage layouts over here. And so just choose the homepage layout that you like. So I'm going to click on this element right here. Maybe I like that one or this one with the no image in the background. Really up to you what you like best. So I'll click on the middle one, click on next over here, and then it gives us some page layouts we can use. So over here we have the about contact page is having a seizure. <laughs> and then we have testimony section and then we have a blog. So this will just create page layouts for these different sections on our sites. So let's click on next. 
And then we have a wide range of plugins that we can automatically install at this time. So forms, which are like your contact form powered by WP forms. Jetpack is a WordPress plugin from WordPress that provides a range of features like analytics, security, speed, growth, like all that good stuff. And then search engine optimization, which is powered by Yoast SEO. So I do recommend Yoast or Rank Math. You can also have email newsletter powered by Creative Mail if you want. So I'll click on that. Lead generation by Optin Monster. So the thing is, like, if you're going to install Optin Monster, you might as well install Creative Mail because, <laughs> like, Optin Monster isn't a lead form builder to get people to subscribe to your email list. So it's like you need an email solution, whether or not you're going to use ConvertKit or Creative Mail up to you then we have site traffic over there so jetpack does provide analytics which i do like site traffic is monster insights so you can connect google analytics to monster insights so you can see your google analytics within your wordpress dashboard so if you're going to be using jetpack you get analytics already so again it's a little bit redundant between these two features but i'm going to have everything installed let's go ahead and click on next all right, now it says hang tight. We're building your Bluehost site. And we have a bunch of different options at top here. Anyways, let's go ahead and click on complete setup. And that is it. Welcome to WordPress. Let's go ahead and set a custom domain name for our website. So during the Bluehost WordPress website setup process, I set vlogauthority.com as the domain name on the account. Now, if your domain names are already registered through Bluehost, everything should be working correctly. Maybe give it 20 minutes or so if you have a, like a weird uh, temporary domain name like this. It does take a little bit of time for everything to propagate as appropriate, but I'll show you also like what to change in the back end of WordPress. Now, if you did register through Namecheap, you're like, what do I do now? Because I'm, I, you were probably looking at something like this and it's quite confusing. So you want to click on settings over here. And then you want to navigate down here where you see NS1, Bluehost, NS2, Bluehost. You need to go over here to within your Namecheap account. Then you need to click on manage. Then once you're within the domain name, you go need to navigate down here to name servers. And we need to change this to custom DNS. Now you enter in name server one and two right here. So you literally just get that information right there. So we'll copy that. Boom. Go ahead and click over here for copy. And then click on that and there you go then make sure to click on this little tiny green check mark and now it will say it could take up to 48 hours to take effect i've never seen it take that long usually it takes effect within 10 20 minutes really it's really that quick so that's really all you have to do now it's set up properly where the domain name is called pointing it's now pointing to your hosting account which is bluehost now within Bluehost or sorry, within WordPress over here, you want to click on settings. Now, once you click on settings, you have your site title tagline, make sure that this is your domain name. Now, if it's not, if it's like the temporary domain name that you're seeing over here like this, let me just let this load. There we go. So if it's like this, literally just delete it. Just type in HTTP. Okay. And now it says not secure. So we can type in HTTPS. because we do get a free SSL certificate. I'll take that, we'll copy that, back out of that, boom. So put in HTTPS to make it secure. And now let's go ahead and click on save changes. Okay, so now it is secure, but we've been logged out. So not a problem, just navigate back to your Bluehost account and click on edit site and it'll log you back in. And there we go. So now we can take a look at the site. Now we have our custom domain name and we have an SSO certificate. Everything is set up. Now, again, if you have any issue with like the SSO certificate, it's not working, you can always contact Bluehost support and they will hook you up and look into it. But really everything should just be working correctly at this time. I mean, I'm doing it right in front of you. I have vlogauthority.com, it's secure. And the domain name is at Namecheap and everything is connected and working as we expect. So anyways, that is it. That's how you set a custom domain name. User account settings you need to take care of. Now, because we installed WordPress using the Bluehost WordPress website builder, it does set a username and email on our behalf. 
Now, the way it works with Bluehost is that they really want you to be logging into your Bluehost account and then clicking over here to edit site and then logging into your site that way, then navigating back to your Bluehost account with this button right there. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And I don't recommend it. Actually, I do recommend sending an email and a username that you want. So now let's navigate over here to users. And then you just want to click on users. This will open up. We have one username. The role is the administrator account. So let me go ahead and click on this right there. Okay, so let's scroll down a little bit. Now right here, you can set a nickname. So your username cannot be changed, but it's not a big deal because you can just change it to a nickname over here. So you just type that in of whatever you want, then change the display name to that. Now, what does it mean like display name publicly as? So when you write a blog post, it's going to say written by, you want to say written by your name, not written by S, X, A, or R, Y, whatever it comes up with. Then email over here, it's set to this temporary email account. So you can just change it to a Gmail account or whatever email client you use. And so just change it as you want right there. And then we navigate down here. Then we're going to see a password right there. There we go. So we can set a new password and we can go ahead and just create our new password with that. Okay. And just use that. And that's how you set your email and password so you can log into your website directly. When you make all of these changes, all you have to do is click over here to update profile. Now, how do you log into your website? So let me go ahead and click on log out. And we're going to be directed to a login page right here. So this is WP admin. So let me back out of this and we have the domain name log authority and WP dash admin. That's what you want to type in to log into your account directly. And if you don't want to go through Bluehost, so you navigate over here, then you enter in the username or email address. So that's why you want to change it, the email address to an email that you know, and a password that you know, then you can log in that way. But if you like logging into your website via the Bluehost dashboard, you can continue doing that. So really just want to give you flexibility with your options designing your website with WordPress and Bluehost. So Bluehost has that onboarding process that it sends you through, which I do quite like for a complete beginner because it does allow you to build a competently designed website, but there's a few issues. So first off, the main issue is that you don't have access to the header and the footer within the design function of WordPress with this theme and with Bluehost, like it just doesn't work. As you saw in the onboarding process, like the header and menu section wasn't loading, like it just doesn't work. I don't know why. Now the header section is up top here where your logo and your navigation is. And it's like, it's not there. And you navigate down here to the footer section and there's no footer. So your footer is where like your copyright for your website appears, privacy policy, terms of use, shipping, return, secondary links, like that type of thing. You need a footer. Your website needs a header and it needs a footer. Now, if we're logged out of the website, there is a header, which we can see up top here, but it's not stylized and doesn't match the website at all. Same with the footer down here where there's no padding. It just looks bad. It doesn't flow into the website. We have a copyright for this wonder, a WordPress block theme by this company. And then we have a bunch of social media links that we don't have control over that we can't change. Like this is just frustrating because if the onboarding process with Bluehost worked properly, and you could set a footer and a header in that design process, I think it would be great for a complete beginner who just wants to build a website within five minutes that looks good and then customize this templated design. Unfortunately, I can't really recommend using this theme, so we're gonna have to go ahead and change it. So let's jump back over here. Okay, so a few things. So the way the theme function works, the way the appearance works is through themes. So we navigate over here and let's open up the theme tab. And you can also open up the editor. So your themes are over here. And so you can, this is the current theme right here that we have active, which is the wonder theme. If you open up the editor, which is going to be over here, this theme uses a full site editor, which is a feature from WordPress, which allows you to customize your website. And again, even within here, you can't add in a header or a footer. It just doesn't work. I've tried new countless times. Even if I navigate over here and we hit enter and then I have another section right down there. So I can even add in this right there and I'll type in footer, footer patterns. And I'll select this footer right there. It doesn't appear. It says inserted. Where has it been inserted? All right, we'll edit the template 
and then this just looks awful like this is just not working correctly unfortunately so i can't recommend this theme now fortunately i have multiple tutorial videos on the 2021 2022 and the 2023 theme about how these themes work specifically so i do recommend clicking over here and activating one of these themes and designing your website so i'll click over here for the 2023 theme i'll click on activate over here and there we go and we can go ahead and click on this over here we can delete this theme right there and so you do have the wonder theme over here so you can activate this again if you want and play around with this theme so we can go ahead and do that for an example then we navigate over here for the editor and then we have the same issue as before so again this theme just doesn't work properly so definitely recommend one of these alternative themes like the 2023 theme so i'll just go ahead and activate that and we'll just keep that and to finish up if you're not happy with any of these default themes you can add on additional themes by clicking on the add new theme button now this is going to take you to the wordpress theme directory and it's organized by popular latest block themes and favorites so favorites are any theme that you mark as a favorite Honestly, when you design your website with a theme, you're not going to be switching out multiple themes. It's not something you're going to be touching on a regular basis. You're going to be more focused on creating content and designing your website. Once your website's done, you're not really going to be touching your theme too much. So anyways, click over here for popular, and these are the most popular themes you can choose. So just find a theme that you like to design your website with. You can also upload themes as well by clicking on the upload button, and then choosing a file and installing the theme now. Now the theme has to be in a zip format. Now this is for a theme marketplace, like when you buy a theme from somewhere and then download that theme to your desktop, then you can upload it using this feature right here. So one such marketplace that I really like is the Envato marketplace for WordPress themes. They have a wide range of themes that you can choose from. And I also really like Thrive Themes in the theme builder. So they have a couple of different options right here, Shapeshift, Omni, Quick, and Bookwise. I particularly like the Quick theme just bringing that up as an idea to use to design your website with because it's well optimized. You have a lot of control over the look and feel of your website and you're able to create different sections on the site quite easily. Totally up to you. But anyways, that's how you choose a different theme for your website. Plugins for your website. So with the Bluehost WordPress website builder, it does install a lot of plugins on your site. And a lot of these plugins you don't really need at this time. So these are the settings that I follow with any brand new website. Now you can navigate to your plugin page by clicking over here in the left hand sidebar, the plugin icon. Then the page opens up and it shows you all the plugins that are currently installed on your website and what plugins are also activated. Now, most of these we can go ahead and delete because we don't need at this time. But let me just quickly explain what each one is so you understand. So Kismet is an anti-spam plugin. And that's useful if you're going to be allowing comments on your website and on your blog post because Akismet will protect against bots from just comment spam. So again, it's totally up to you. If you're not going to be having comments on your blog, then you don't really need this plugin. Creative Mail by Newfold Digital is a free email marketing plugin, but it's not really free. It's pretty good because it does integrate with WooCommerce, which is an e-commerce plugin. But again, it's not free. It does cost money over here. And the free functionality is pretty limited, like AI driven email creation. Like there's tools that you can use to create email content, WordPress admin management. Like this is just not that useful, the free version. So I don't really like this. And I prefer to use something like ConvertKit for email marketing. Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights is a decent plugin because it allows you to connect your Google Analytics and display it within your WordPress dashboard. But you can just navigate to Google Analytics and log into your Google Analytics account once you set that up and install it on your website. So this is a little redundant. And also Jetpack gives you analytics. So I do like Jetpack for that. So I don't really use this. Hello Dolly is just a default plugin that just <laughs> has a quote on your site. Really not that useful. Jetpack's pretty useful overall because it allows related posts on your website and a couple other different features. Optin Monster is only ideal if you're going to be doing email marketing at this time. If you have a brand new website, you're probably not going to be doing that, but it allows you to create forms to help generate leads. The Bluehost plugin is what is powering this over here. And this plugin, I don't really find that helpful. 
really the only usefulness of this account or sorry this plugin is to just click click over here to navigate to the bluehost accounts where you can view your site but i can view my site by doing this and opening up in a new tab so i don't really find this plugin that useful wp forms is a form building plugin so that's pretty good for creating like a basic contact form for your website so we can keep that then Yoast seo is a very good wordpress seo plugin to help optimize your blog post so let's go ahead and deactivate a lot of these different plugins so we can deactivate this creative mail close this window and deactivate and let's deactivate monster insights let's deactivate opt-in monster and let's deactivate the bluehost plugin wonderful so let's click over here select each one of these items and then let's go ahead and delete these from our website. Okay, so now we should only have Jetpack, WP Forms Lite, and Yoast SEO installed. Now, how do you add on new plugins? So we can click over here to search for install plugins, but you can click on add new right there to add on new plugins. One plugin I do recommend is WP Super Cache. Let's open up this and a caching plugin just allows your website to load more quickly by providing a cache of your website to the end visitor it's a little bit technical about how it works but this is one very good plugin that you do need i would not necessarily activate it now you do want to design your website first and then come back and activate that so we just want to install this but we don't want to activate this because you're going to be designing your website but once you're finished designing your website then you want to navigate back over here and click on activate and overall this is looking much better much more clean simple less busy <laughs> and so i really like this now if we take a look at jetpack over here i do find jetpack quite helpful so let's just navigate to a couple of different settings so let's click over here for our dashboard and right here is where you can get your analytics. Let's click over here for settings. Now, under the settings is where you have a bunch of different aspects that you can click and check out. So for example, the newsletter, and you have to create a WordPress account to activate all this, but you can let visitors subscribe to new posts. And then when you publish a blog post, it gets sent out automatically without you having to do anything. Under the traffic tab right there, you can have related blog posts, which is quite useful. And this is powered by Jetpack, so it's on Jetpack's server, not your own server, so it's not taking up any more like bandwidth. And I find these two features quite useful for Jetpack. And this is why I like Jetpack. So you have a related post function. Like if your theme doesn't come with this already, this is how you can get related posts that look good for your website. And then the newsletter function is quite useful because you can just provide a quick little subscribe for updates, whatever, people can subscribe, you publish a blog post, they get that blog post automatically without you having to think about it or do anything. And then when you're ready to get serious about email marketing, then you can sign up to a proper email client. And then of course you get analytics. So analytics are useful. You can, see, you can just easily see how many people have visited your site, and what are your most popular blog posts and so forth. And of course you can install Google analytics on your site as well uh, when you're ready to proceed forward with that. But Jetpack is a good kind of mid range plugin that does a few different features. I really like blogging and creating content for your website. Let's get started. So with WordPress, you have two functions, you have posts and you have pages. So pages are for things that are static and really don't fit into any category. Now, a page would be something like your about page, blog, contact, resources, privacy, terms of use, that type of thing. Posts, however, must be categorized within WordPress. So what is a category? A category should be related to what your website is about. In general, I, I would recommend like seven categories max for your website. And again, they should be things that are related to your site. So if you have a travel blog, you should be having categories like travel tips or different countries, something like that would make sense, like travel tips, travel gear, uh, you know, hotel reviews, whatever. Like those are categories, not thoughts and feelings and uncategorized <laughs> as an example. Now to create additional categories, you can navigate over here for categories and just put in the category name right there and then the slug and then the description of the category page if you want. 
totally up to you, but I definitely recommend putting in a description. So what does that all do? So we take a look at my site. So let's just open up this one right here and we'll click over here for the web hosting category. So as you can see with the URL structure up top there, it says category, web hosting, web hosting, and then a quick description of what this is. This section right there is being powered by this description aspect right there. And you can create child categories or subcategories, whatever you want to call it over here as well. So maybe you have like web hosting as a category, then a, a secondary category would be Bluehost. Then you have a bunch of posts on Bluehost or specific web host or VPS hosting or shared hosting, whatever. That's how you'd structure this. So for example, I can click over here. We'll call it web hosting. The slug URL I want it to be hosting. And let me go ahead and click on add a new category. And then over here, we'll call it shared. So like for shared hosting, then shared, or we have shared hosting, then maybe call that hosting shared hosting. And then the parent category would be web hosting. Boom. There we go. Let's go ahead and click on add a new category. And there you go. So you have your primary category, subcategory, and you can do that. And so again, I recommend like seven categories. You really want to aim for roughly like maybe like a hundred blog posts per category. So that's the, now that brings me to my next point with tags. Tags are for things that are like kind of one-off topics, niche specific that you're not going to be talking a lot about or blogging a lot about on your websites. So that's when you'd want to use a tag. Maybe it's something that you talk about like three, four or five times. So like if we're talking about cars as a category and then tags would be like Ford Mustang. I don't know. You have maybe four posts on Ford Mustang. That's how you want to use the tag function over here. Now, if we navigate over here to our settings and we click on reading. Now, if we navigate down here, you have a couple different options over here. So you, first off, you can set your blog post over here for static and your latest blog post. You can change it to the home page or post page. And so over here with pages, you can literally create a page and set it as the home page. So by default with the WordPress website builder from Bluehost, it does create a home page. Then we have a post page over here so we can set that post page to be our blog page. Then you can change over here how many blog posts are shown, syndication of the feed. Ideally, I usually like to have, I go by three, so three, six, so forth. So I usually keep it like three, six, nine. And there we go. So right down here, you have your jetpack settings over here that you can adjust as well. And then always make sure to click on save changes. And if we click over here for permalinks, which are quite important, permalinks literally mean the permanent link structure of your blog post. Now, by default with Bluehost and WordPress, it's set to post name, which is a good category structure, or you can create your own custom structure. And so you can have post name and category. So we click over here for back out of that. And I'll click over here, click on post name, actually. Let's back out of that and click on category, then post name. There we go. So this is an ideal structure if you're going to be creating a massive website with thousands and thousands of blog posts where you want to organize everything by category and post name. So it would be like vlogauthority.com slash vlogging tips slash then the post name. You know, if that makes any sense. So what do I recommend for most people, for most websites, post name is quite adequate. Then over here, you can change the category base if you want and the tag base as well. You're like, well, what does that mean? So if you don't want it to say category, see how it says right up top there, it says category and then the category name. If you're like, I don't like the word category, I would rather have it be something else. All right, we can make it whatever you want right here. So if you want to switch it over to topics, whatever, you could do that right there. Same with tags. So tags on the sites, uh, let me click over here. And I'll just show you a tag page. We click over here, as you can see, Tags have the similar structure up top there where it's tag and then the tag title. If you don't like tag and you just want to call it something else, you can do that right down there as well. Okay, so that's it for pages and posts. So let's take a look at a blog post and let's go ahead and open up. Let's actually, let's create a brand new blog post. Okay, so we have a lot going on over here. So first off, you have your title at the top. So you want this to be an SEO based title. So a title is kind of related to like what the blog post is going to be about. You want it to be keyword specific, but also clickable 
and interesting. So as an example, let's me navigate over here. So this is my Bluehost review. That's the keyword I'm going after. Unraveling the pros and cons of that. This makes it a little bit more interesting and clickable. And so that's what you need to do over here. You need to add in your title right here. So blog post title goes here. Then with WordPress, you have a block builder. And so the block builder allows you to click this plus sign. You can add in different blocks. How do you structure a blog post? All right. So let's take a look at this. First off, you want to use short little paragraphs and then hit the enter button and keep it, uh, give it some space just so it has some breathing room. You don't want to give people a wall of text. And then you want to make sure you use H2 and H3 title tags. So there's like an H2 title tag where it's kind of big and it stands out. And this is the H3 of this. So it's a subheading of this. How do you do that? So you have text over here and then I want to have in a new section. I'm going to click over here for paragraph. And so we have our paragraph text right there. Okay, so we can click over here for hello. And then I'll click over here for the paragraph. Then we want to switch that to heading. And with heading, you have H2, H3, or H4, H5, H6. Now, this is not just designed to like change the size of the text. Because <laughs> I've worked with people and they think that. No, H2 is your a subheader. So this right here, the blog post title, this at the very top, that's H1. Every page and post should have an H1 title tag. This is your H2. And this is a subheading of this. And then H3, let me type that in. H3 over here, heading H3. This is a subheading of this. And so on and so forth. So you want to use H2, H3, H4 title tags as needed. Now over here, you have a few different options. So you can see the block and the post. So the post tab just affects the blog post. Okay. So the visibility, publish template, the URL, and then stick the blog post to the top pending review. And then the, who's the author categories are over here. You can add a new category as you want from this section as well. Though so this does need to be categorized as something So you can categorize it as one of your categories or a subcategory or put it in both the main and subcategory if you want. And then your tags are right down here, which you can just click over here and add in a new tag. Simple as that. Then you have your featured image right there. So what does featured image mean? So the featured image is this thing right here. We see these little images associated with the blog post. That's your featured image. I definitely recommend you use something like Canva to create any type of graphics with. This is what I personally use. So that's what featured images are all about. Excerpt over there is what right what an excerpt is or what, what the blog post is about. So the excerpt is this little section right there underneath the title. So again, optional. Now, if we click over here, or sorry, we scroll down a bit more, then we have this section right there, which is powered by Yoast SEO. And the way you want to set this up is to have it be a keyword rich title, then page separator, then the name of the website. So I typically just delete all of this and just manually do this. So for example, if the title of the blog post is like best vlogging cameras, page separator, and then site title. That's how I would do that. And you got to pay attention to the green bar. So this needs to be a little bit longer. You want to get this bar up top here. Best vlogging cameras for experienced users. I don't know. Something like that. You want to get it up to this range. And if you want to create something that's really long, it doesn't make any sense to have the site title in there. You can always just back out of this. And then the slug right there is your URL for your website. And then the meta description, which will be fed to the search engines, which pops up in the search engines over there. Then you have your SEO analysis over here, which is powered by Yo. So this is just a high level overview of like things that you should consider adding in. So like images, internal links, keyword length, outbound links, like linking to other articles on the internet, internal links, uh, and so forth. So that's what SEO analysis is all about. Okay. So let's take a quick look at some blocks. So we, if we click on browse all over here, you'll see that you have blocks patterns and media. So media, we have a tab to the open verse right there, which is a bunch of random pictures, 
patterns over here are featured post text gallery so if i click over here for say call to action then we have a bunch of sections that we can just click and add into our website simple as that so you can design your blog posts and pages quite nicely with the block builder over here so if you click on browse all you have blocks and you have patterns okay and so blocks you can you can explore this on your own so you have paragraph heading list classic quote details and you can also add in additional plugins that add in new blocks so if we nav navigate down a little bit you'll see forms and this is these are all these buttons are green well that's because these are powered by jetpack so all the ones that are colored in green are from jetpack so if you remove jetpack you lose access to all these little blocks over there so what plugin do I also like as a block builder? Well, let's navigate back over here. Let's jump over to our plugins and let's go ahead and add new. And one that I really like is called Stackable. So we'll search for that. And then let's click install. And go ahead and activate. Great, and we just can go ahead and skip this right here. And that's it. So let me go ahead and save this draft. We'll close out of this. And let's reload this. All right, so if we navigate down, we'll just click on a button over here, browse. Now you see these purple buttons. These are from Stackable. And so you can play around with wide range of plugins to add on additional blocks stackable is one of my favorites and it's something that i currently use so if you take a look at like my website we click over here for resources and we take a look at like web hosting or these blocks like these are powered by stackable these little blocks so that is powered by the featured image so we take a look at over here featured and then click out over this here and then featured and then there we go. And then you can custom design this to get the same effect that's going on over here. Okay. And so Stackable is really helpful for just adding on additional features. So if I click over here for plus, we'll click on browse all. And we want to click on something like the design library, open the design library. And then you have UI kits. We have wireframes and block designs. So some of these are paid. And some of them are free like the wireframes are all free and so the wireframes are useful because then you can kind of custom design things yourself so for example I'll click on the call to action over there easily adds this in then i can just adjust the text as i needed which is quite useful if you're designing a blog post or a page you want to call to action or just have a little bit more stylized uh, text and elements on the page you have that ability with the block builder from wordpress and finally, let's go ahead and create a professional email for our website. Now it's very easy. Just navigate back to your Bluehost dashboard and click on cPanel email. Once you click on that, a white box will appear with a few different options. So email accounts or the emails associated with your Bluehost account. You can easily create and delete emails. You have forwards over here, email filters, global filters, spam filters, and auto responders. So when people email you at your Bluehost email, it'll automatically respond email routing so we want to navigate up top here with email accounts and go ahead and click on continue once the cpanel email account loads all you have to do is click on create okay so now we can easily create an email account so right down here let's click the drop down i have vlog authority right there so that's a domain name i have at namecheap and it's pointing to my hosting account if you have domains registered through bluehost they will appear here as well all you have to do is enter in a username and a password right there and then click on create. And it's as simple as that. So whenever you want to check your professional email, all you have to do is navigate to your Bluehost dashboard, click on cPanel email, then click on check email right here. Then all you have to do is click on RoundCube. So this is open source webmail software. And this is the inbox for your professional email account. All right, everyone, that's it for this tutorial video on how to create a website with Bluehost. Overall, I really like Bluehost and I do think that they have a unique selling point with that onboarding process. If you can create something where a complete beginner who knows nothing about WordPress and knows nothing about web design, answer a bunch of questions and then get a custom made website at the end of it, I think that's really great. However, let's be honest, the onboarding process, the WordPress website builder, whatever you want to call it, 
is a little bit buggy. But if they can get that down pat and working to 100% of where it needs to be, I think they have a really unique product offering for a complete beginner. And of course, you can always just delete the Wonder theme altogether and then just follow along with one of my tutorial videos to custom design your website using another theme. Anyways, I'll leave it there. My name is David. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.